I'm trying to do some Halloween noises. I'm no, <laughs> is I'm that no, what that is? I'm no good at it. <laughs> got, I got nothing. Got nothing? I got no. nothing. No, I got nothing. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to Geeking Poetic Podcast. I am your host, Larry Roberts. Across from me is... Vito Marchese. And the little ghost who could is sitting right here in the middle of us, and her name is... Megan Guest. And this is Real Talk Milton. No, this is, we're not going to start getting into R. R. Kelly, R. Kelly yeah. stuff. Oh, like, boy. Playing not some, doing that again. Playing some real talk. But yeah, this is uh, an episode of Real Talk, you know, real geeky talk, where we're going to just kind of riff on a topic related usually to whatever the month's general topic is. And we just got done talking about Stephen King, because mm-hmm. we're all, to varying degrees, fans of Stephen King's output from... 1974, 75 to now. And it was a lot of fun talking about Stephen King. It was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. You know, there's always a, is. <clears throat> a lot of stuff to talk about, but it got us thinking about, well, what is there to talk about? Because Stephen King's stories are not, you know, they're all fictional or whatever, but talking about what could we talk about real talk? And then Megan had a good idea because she was talking about. I'll be smart. Yeah. <laughs> she's schooled. Got she's, me an education. She's got the brains. <laughs> she was the smartest one in Cleveland, Oklahoma. <laughs> well, she was, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's what she told us, folks. <laughs> totally what I sold these guys. She came and she was like, I'll have you know, I was the smartest fucking kid in Cleveland. Like, I don't know if you knew that. But mm-hmm. That's what I said. Y'all need to get me on this show. <laughs> that's what her resume said. We had five other girls from Cleveland, Oklahoma, <laughs> and none of them had the smartest girl from Cleveland, Oklahoma on their resume. So we're like, See? well, Megan must be the real that's deal it. then. I'll tell you right now, everybody at home is like, well, we know that's bullshit because there's no way they had five other girls that wanted to have anything to do with these guys in this show. <laughs> yeah, all tall tales. But uh, yeah, you were saying, so you were saying like it'd be kind of cool we should talk about Stephen King's stories. There's all different kinds of horror stories, right? Mm-hmm. All different- yeah, he covers all sorts of different ways to scare people. So I thought it might be fun to find out what of his stories do scare the shit out of us. And why. Yeah, and why. and Psychological. Mm-hmm. Yeah, talking about like psychological things. I mean, off just like off the top of your head, what would you say is probably one of the scariest tropes in Stevens or, or any it doesn't just have to be Stephen King. No, but it could be anything. Any Any kind of horror. Like what's the stuff that really gets to you? Because I know you, My, yeah. I, I think I mentioned it several times in when our review and everything, like right. 1408, and in the tall grass. But also, I know you don't like it, but like secret window, yeah, where you like get stuck in your own head, right? And it mm-hmm. fucks with you. It was like it maybe like in 1408, where it's the room really fucking with you, but it <clears> fucked <throat> with you because of the shit in your head. It was particular to you. If it was somebody else they were showing this stuff to and it was happening to them, it wouldn't affect them the same way. Right. And then, like in 1408 and in the tall grass where it's a loop and it does it, you go through it over and over and over until you find a way out, whatever that way may be. Now, do you find yourself... You know, we all have bad dreams. We all have nightmares and stuff. Do you ever find yourself having dreams like that? Where you're stuck in like a loop, you know, or where, do, have you ever had one of those dreams where you feel like you can't get, get out, out of it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> those are really frustrating. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of freaked out now. <laughs> I was like, I'm totally going to have one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I've already resigned myself to that because especially knowing the way my, my mind tonight. works that, that after we talk about stuff tonight, cause I know there's stuff I'm going to talk about that I'm going to later, I'm going to be laying there in bed. <laughs> like just laying there with like the blanket pulled up like under my chin and I'm gonna be like why the fuck did I talk about that earlier tonight <laughs> I can't stop thinking about it yeah <laughs> yeah I could see that I could see that being pretty scary yeah unnerving and I don't know it just freaks me out or the idea of in in your mind you cannot distinguish between what's real and, and what's, what you think is real exactly you know? You you think this is real, but it, it's it's everybody not. else is like no that didn't happen to you. What are you talking about? 
Right, you know? exactly. And what if you're paranoid enough where you don't know if you should believe them or not, and now you're second-guessing yourself, mm-hmm. even though you've been second-guessing yourself this entire time? Yeah, it's and, just, again, it's a loop, and how do you get out of yeah. it? And are, are you, like, afraid of people that... How do you feel about the thing of, like, people that don't believe you or people that don't understand? I know I have a lot of dreams where... I get frustrated because maybe something fucked up's going on and I'm trying to tell somebody and mm-hmm. they're like, they don't understand. You know, you know how some in dreams, they just don't make sense where you feel mm-hmm. like you're not communicating to them or they don't believe you that they don't, they don't understand. And it, have you ever had something like that? Mm, not that I'm recalling at this very moment. I'm sure I have, but I can see that being very frustrating, trying, trying to explain to somebody else so they can help you figure this situation out. Right. It's, it's just not working, adding to, more to your frustrations. Now, when, now I know you're talking more about like psychological and stuff, but how about how about things when it's like literally like not being able to find your way out of something like physically, like a maze or being trapped? Do you have any kind of claustrophobic kind of fears or anything like that? Um, not an overwhelming feeling, no. Okay, I do. Yeah. I do too. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't one of the most tense scenes in a king movie or story is the is the maze in the end of The Shining mm-hmm. when Wendy's being pursued by Jack. Mhm. And everything, and just that whole idea of when you're watching her, and even just watching it on the screen, you're watching her, and like she's taking a turn, and you're just like, "Fuck, fuck, don't, turn, don't fucking turn that way." And when I was younger, I used to have these dreams of being like trapped in a maze and turning a corner and looking way down at the other end of whatever the hallway path, mm-hmm. and everything, and all of a sudden seeing something, there's a person or creature or something there, and just that, <gasps> and you know being like I gotta get the fuck away but not being able to get away you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. feeling like you're just going in never ending loops and not knowing how to get out that's pretty fucking terrifying to me you guys might not like in the tall grass (laughs) I can see that being very claustrophobic feeling for you see to me that's that seems like it's more of you're just stuck in a maze and it is claustrophobic where you're actually being crushed and surrounded that's my fear like I hate being Mm. the feeling I'm actually being confined and I cannot get out of the space because it's crushing me that like that scares the shit out of me wow well that's kind of what it does and ever since I was a little kid I've had that fear you know like when you would go like a swim park and you'd see people would go through the tube I don't like that either, And I was either, like, dude, man. if I got stuck in there and people were piling up behind me, like I, I wouldn't be able to handle that, and I would freak out, and I would never go on those things, you know? Hmm. It also didn't help that Vito was, like, way larger than most yeah. of the kids. <laughs> most of the other kids. You were, like, two feet, and you were six already? <laughs> they've got, like, tubes, yeah. They've got, like, you know, um, um, what, do you, what do you call them? They're, uh, oh, my God, boy, the tubes, the... Uh, water slides Mm -hmm. you know they've got the water slides or those or just those regular slides that kind of go through a tube and it's like well this is made for kids aged you know three to three to ten and it's like Vito's like seven but he's (laughs) as tall as like a 13 year old (laughs) i was like well wait a minute (laughs) so is that more scary to you guys than an open Oh, yeah, slide? absolutely really because if it's open i'd be like i'm just gonna chill right here and just wait for it to kill me or i'll just wait it out but if i'm being confined i'm like dude i I can't do this i can't do this you have to get me out right now and i'll just freak out you know Hmm. Hmm. yeah Yeah. i'm the other way i guess that's because i'm so tiny i'm afraid i'm gonna fly out of it (laughs) i don't like water slides no i do like in theory i do they can be fun but i but i don't know they're it's just so funny they're one of those things where it's like who thought this was a good idea Serious, there's so many fucking things that can go wrong with this thing and do. <laughs> I did um, years back, so quite a, quite a while ago, early 2000s, I went to a water park and I did the thing where you go down the slide and then at the end of it, you wind up in that big kind oh, of the funnel, funnel thing. thing. Mm. And it, in theory, it like, wow, that looks like so much fun. <sighs> but I, I did it and I was going really fast and then all of a sudden... I, I did, you know, most people seem like they kind of spin around, spin around, spin around, funnel down, and then they drop. And I like literally got to the funnel. It was half spin drop. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I fell. Beat it, kid. You bother me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just, it just, that thing just shat me out. It just shat me out like a big asshole. 
<laughs> and I, <laughs> but I fell head and neck Ooh. first. Oh, I no. hit the water. And that's why I'm like, how do you prevent that from happening? There's no, you know, it's hard, one, you don't have any control. Right. It's just whichever way gravity is going to take you. And I fell and I hit the back of my neck. And I mean, it stunned me. Like I almost blacked out. And you don't want to do that, <laughs> you know, especially in water, water and everything. Yeah. Man, and that would make a great Final Destination movie at the water park. <laughs> <laughs> like they had the roller coaster one where the roller coaster exploded and everybody died horrifically. Oh, I see it. I will. I absolutely refuse to watch that kind of crap. I hate that crap. I don't think it's entertaining. I don't. I don't understand why people are entertained. That's that's horrible because that could really happen. And it's like that's not entertaining. A little kid that's turned into a vampire flying up to your window trying to get in. That's entertaining because it's a little laughable, but it's still kind of spooky and creepy. But that shit ain't going to happen. You know what I mean? I don't want to see... that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, I don't want to see like, oh, here's a scary movie where all these people died in a fire aboard an airplane. It's like, fuck that. <laughs> No, it's really brutal. It's so cool, bro. It's like, no, it's horrible. That happens, you motherfuckers. You think it's great because it's on fucking screen or whatever, but tell me how great it is next time you're on a plane and that shit happens. You're going to be like, well, this wasn't so fucking entertaining after <laughs> all, you know? Like, damn, should have bought that exit row seat, huh? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's we've talked about that before. I just don't find that kind of, that's a whole other thing. I won't waste time getting into the whole like obviously those things scare me but they scare me because they're real or whatever mm -hmm. I, I don't really want to I, I it's not even that they scare me they they make me mad and depressed you know like it's not I, I want to talk about things that scare me like mm -hmm. like I said the kind of things that keep me up at night that, so what scares you oh god <sighs> okay well uh, well, speaking of like Stephen King, more specific kind of things, the idea of, uh, of houses that are, that have some sort of like presence, you know, like a Salem's lot type house, a haunted house kind of thing. Yeah. That freaks me out. That scares me. I've talked about it on the podcast. I know I've talked to you guys personally about it. That freaks me out because my house, because it's not that my house is haunted, but there've been some weird things that depending on who you are you either have experienced it and believe me and believe it or you think like my mom thinks it's all complete bullshit <laughs> my mom's lived in that house for so many years and she's like i've never seen or experienced or nothing there's never been anything in that house that's made me it's it's all bullshit but then my dad totally concurred with me about it and was like oh yeah no i back when before you were born and i was working on the basement of that house and you know it, was, it wasn't even dark or anything it's just i saw it. my dad claims that when he was working on our basement he was over in the laundry room area mm -hmm. and this is before all the walls were down there so it was all kind of more or less open okay other than my stair now you guys i'm explaining this for the listeners at home <laughs> but you two have been in my house plenty of times mm -hmm. so so the walls to Willie's room and all that were not there. But what was there was the stairs, mm -hmm. you know, the middle stairs mm -hmm. and everything that go from the kitchen. And then the, uh, the, the little storage room with our water heater and the, and the, the central heating and air unit and all that stuff. So that was blocking to go from the front of the basement. And my dad said that at least once he said he was there working and he saw the corner of his eye, he, he saw somebody standing there he thought somebody had come into the house and he said then he looked and he realized there was somebody there but they weren't mm. like it was like they were there but they weren't quite there mm. and he said like it didn't look it looked he wasn't like floating around like casper <laughs> yeah. but it was but it was like you could tell that he didn't seem completely three-dimensional solid like there uh -huh. was something about him and i i I can't, it's been years ago that my dad told me this. I was like a teenager when he told me this and everything. But he said, yeah, and it was at the bottom of those stairs there. And I, that's why I asked him, I'm like, where was this? He's like, there was, they was, he was standing on whatever. It was appeared over at the bottom of the stairs. And my dad like looked and he kind of like looked around. And he looked back and he was gone. Mm -hmm. And now this is the thing about my dad. Like my dad, especially by this point in my life, it would even be one thing if my dad told me that when I was little. 
I might have thought, oh, he's, you know, he's fucking with me. But by this point, I was like 18, 19 years old, and he was very matter of fact about it. And it came up because my uh, stepbrother had been playing in the basement and was complaining about, and came running up. This was on Christmas Eve one year, and came running up complaining about, oh, I thought I saw something down there. I was, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was all spooked. And, and everybody was kind of going, oh, yeah, okay, you know, it's just your imagination, blah, blah, blah. And I was going, oh, you know, I, you know, that's, I dealt with that my whole life and everything. And my mom's blowing it off. And then my dad says, oh, no, yeah, no, it's, yeah, there's things, there's something up with that. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and my dad tells me this story. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You're telling me this now? <laughs> And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, why didn't you ever tell me? He's like, well, I didn't want to scare you. He's like, I didn't. I never wanted to tell you about that when you were a kid because you spent most of your time, a lot of time down in that basement. My dad, the room that became Willie's room was like my playroom when I was a kid. Yeah. Like he had built a big toy box and set it all. It was, it was great. I had this awesome playroom and everything. And he made that for me. So he was like, I wasn't about to tell you that I saw something scary down there because... I, then you'd never want to go down there. And I was like, and it was like, it made me mad. But then at the same time, it vindicated me because all my life I had experienced and seen different things that happen in this house. And oh, what things are falling. <laughs> You're freaking me out now, man. <laughs> Doing that shit on purpose. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I when I was a kid, I really young kid, I used to get up in the middle of the night and I would sleepwalk a lot. Hmm. And, you know, even when I was a kid, I, I, and this is the thing, I was always afraid of the basement, especially those stairs, especially at the bottom of those fucking stairs. Had no idea why. And uh, there were times that I would be, I would sleepwalk and they would check on me or my aunt who used to babysit me all the time because my parents would often work nights. Mm -hmm. My aunt would go check on me and wouldn't be in the room and she'd find me and I'd be standing asleep at the bottom of the basement stairs. Ooh. Now, the thing about that is... Uh, that would be creepy looking yeah, down man. there and seeing a little blonde-haired little boy down there. Larry's looking up at you. <laughs> he turns around. <laughs> like a glick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're like Larry, and all of a sudden, I go, <laughs> <laughs> No, I'd be standing... He comes stand up right, does the fucking Pennywise <laughs> shit up the stairs or something. That'd be fucking crazy. Dude, <laughs> no. Um, Walking backwards. No. Oh, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no. Right. no, no, no. We'll get to that in a minute. It's bad enough that we're gonna get. We're gonna talk about that shit. But no, I would just. She would find me, and I'd be asleep, standing at the bottom of the stairs. And be, and the funny thing about that is, when I was awake, there's no way I would ever just stand at the bottom of those stairs by myself, especially by myself, especially at night like that. No, 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 no. That didn't happen. Um. Or wouldn't happen, rather. Um, and we used to have, and if my buddy David is listening to this, I'll have to tell him to make sure he listens to this if he hasn't <laughs> lately. He can attest this. I had other friends that can attest this. I had this fucking statue cat. The infamous statue cat. <laughs> Everybody's heard about the statue cat. There was a cat. I, my parents think that they got it as a wedding gift. They couldn't quite remember where it came from. Hmm. Okay. First thing, <laughs> number one. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> but it was a Siamese cat statue that was sitting like, kind of like upright, you know, with its hind legs crutched and the, you know, front legs straight. straight. Mm -hmm. And it had the, the uh, eyeballs, you know, sculpted, but there was no pupil iris or anything. It was just, and the thing was like orange red. Mm -hmm. It was like an orangey red color, which is kind of weird. And it was ceramic or whatever. And it was, it was probably, you know, it was, I guess about, it was maybe about 22 inches high, something oh, like wow. that, you know, 24 inches high. It was, it was pretty, it was a pretty big statue. And I was terrified, terrified of this thing. But, um, they used to, like at one point they had it in our, the corner of our dining room, um, over near like our bookcases and stuff, you know, and I would dream at night about being in my house and the house was all dark and it looked all like candle lit, you know, like creepy candle lit. Sorry, I don't know how to explain it. I could still remember this very clearly, actually, even though I was extremely young. 
and I would be walking through the house, walking through the kitchen. There'd be nobody around and it would be dead silent. And I would walk into the dining room and I would kneel down, sit down in front of the statue cat and the cat would just be staring at me and then it would open its eyes and it had human eyes (laughs) and I would startle awake and I was kneeling in front of the statue cat in real life. I slept, walked into the dining room, dreaming all this, quote unquote, dreaming all this <laughs> and everything. And I would actually kneel in front of the statue cat. The statue cat would open its fucking eyes and look at me. It didn't attack me or anything. It would just open its eyes. That's it. Never spoke, never did anything. It just opened its eyes. And I would startle awake and just about piss my pants because I was actually kneeling in front of the statue cat. That's fucked up, folks. I'm sorry. You could say, oh, well, whatever. It's just your imagination, and you was just you were just a weird kid that was that had a tendency to. Do. Okay, fine. It's still fucked up. All right, that was still, and we're talking when I was like four that I would do this. Four or five, you know. <laughs> so, and then I would run my little ass back to my room, <laughs> shut the door. Um, yeah, I had a lot of, there's all sorts of weird instances. I think I brought it up maybe to you guys before I told you about the red man, didn't I? Did I, I ever tell you about the red, red man? man? Okay. The method man or just red man? <laughs> red man. Yeah. And then I got high. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden I was laying there. I was three years old and this guy came, this black dude came into my room smoking a big dube and he was like, won't get high. Um, anyway, no, that's not at all what happened, but. Okay, so this is even earlier. When I was three years old, uh, yeah, it was right around three. I could talk and stuff, but, you know, so I was that age, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't the best at communicating, I guess, at that point. It was way before school or anything. Um, My parents were out for the evening, and my aunt was watching me at my house, and the door to my room was weird. It was... A big full wooden door, but the top panel of the door was actually like a wire mesh. Hmm. Okay. It, it made it made sense because my, my parents' room was across the hallway. So I think that their rationale for having this door is I could have the door shut, but I had the mesh so that if I cried mm-hmm. or anything, they could hear me. You know what I mean? Four baby monitors. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, you're, well, this is the, this is the <laughs> yeah, this is the early 1970s. So, you know. Um, and I was, I, I was homesick. I had a really bad fever and I was not, I was not feeling well. And I remember laying in the, in the room feeling really shitty and I guess I was asleep. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I was asleep or not. I, I guess I was, they, they would say I was, but I was laying there in the room feeling really bad and I had this fever and all this stuff. And at one point my door opened and God, I remember even him even looking through the steel, the, the mesh grate and everything at first and me just being laying there like frozen and sick and everything. And the door opened and this guy came in. Yeah, I, it wasn't a guy. I mean, it was a, a thing came in and he was like glowing red. Hmm. He was literally like luminescent red, but he was sort of like featureless, almost kind of like a, like an alien type thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like he, he. You, he had eyes, he had a mouth, he had limbs and everything, but he was kind of featureless. He was sort of husky. It was almost Gollum looking, not Gollum from Return of the King, Lord of the Rings, but a Gollum, the like the, a, the the Slavic statue creature. Jewish thing. lore. Yes, lore. exactly. Um, right, Jewish lore, <clears throat> exactly. Um, he was almost more like a glowing red Gollum kind of character, and he came into the room. And but the weird thing is, is I was I was scared, but I wasn't. There was this weird um, pleasantness to him. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like that I didn't feel threatened. I was I was scared because I was like, well, you know, what the fuck is this? But I didn't literally think, what the fuck is this? Because I was only three. <laughs> but I was just like, I don't, what is this? You know, and I was, I felt out of my mind and I was sweating. I was hot and everything. And he was kind of almost like, almost smiling at me like he was just kind of, and I just remember I don't remember anything about it I just remember that he came in he was standing there and then next thing I knew he was gone and within moments my parents came home mm-hmm. they were home and I could hear them down the hallway and talking to my aunt and him saying they're saying oh he's in bed blah 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 and they came in and I was awake 
And they're like, oh, you're awake and everything. And they checked me and my fever was gone. Hmm. Interesting. And I was like much better. Weird. And I think I was babbling about the red man or whatever. And they were like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know, <laughs> I must have been dreaming. You know, I was having some weird dream. And maybe I was having a weird dream, but whatever it was, maybe it was due to the fever. You know, the, the it old was fever dream. It was a fever dream kind of thing. But whatever happened when I woke up, I was I was good. They took my temperature and they're like, oh, your fever's gone. I was like normal again. And I was fine. <laughs> so I don't know what the red man was all about, but he cured my fever. Whether I imagined him or it was something, I, I don't know. But there was always weird things in my house um, w over the years. And a lot of it had to do with the basement, with, with downstairs, it seemed like. And like I said, I heard about the thing. Yeah, go ahead. Does it seem, because like, <clears throat> I've been in your basement a load of time. Right. Does it seem to focus and happen more to men? Yes. That's a good point. That's a really good point, actually, because I like I've been alone in your house, yeah, many many times, right? And I, I've never got a strange vibe, right, or anything. I I've, I've been at the bottom of those stairs, and well, to be fair, it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem anywhere near as prevalent as it did when I was younger and when I say younger, I don't just mean when I was a little kid, but even through my teens and, and on, mm -hmm. it seems like it's kind of, I don't know, not disappeared, but it's, you know, has Jess ever noticed anything? Not really. I mean, she gets creeped out by, you know, the be you know, in just general and stuff, but I don't think she's ever felt anything. She's never seen anything, you know, no, and my mom hasn't. You haven't. Other girls. But you I've and known. your dad have. So but me and my dad weird. have. Yeah. And his my step buddies. Brother. Yeah, my stepbrother. Step yeah, yeah. My buddies like David, Danny, Robbie. Uh, there was an incident. Real quick, I'll tell you this. There was an incident when I was stupid teenagers. <laughs> of course. So you know, I went through a whole phase of like most kids do. I went through a whole phase between the ages of like, you know, 13 and 17, 18, where you feel badass. You, you, things don't scare you anymore. That's where usually when you get into horror movies and you love slasher flicks. And believe it or not, for as much as I don't like that shit now, I did then. Like, I, I loved Jason. I loved Freddy. Mike My Michael Myers. Mike Myers. <laughs> Party on. Um, <laughs> Michael Myers Halloween <laughs> Uh, other like you know, Evil Dead. I yeah, still yeah. I still love Evil Dead. Um, but you know, I was so much more like yeah, like I was disaffected by all mm -hmm. that kind of shit. I'm more sensitive to it now. But um, and even The Exorcist and all that, which we'll 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 get to that. One time there was an incident where me and a f handful of my friends decided we were going to try to do like a seance kind of thing down in my basement with a Ouija board and all that stuff. And stupid teenagers. Not a good idea. No. Dude. Well, Terrible. you know, here's the thing. Even at the time, so here's the thing. At the time, I was like, well, that's all bullshit. You know what I mean? I, I don't care. I ain't I'm not risking it. <laughs> well, I have a different, and I'll get into it in a second. I have a different a theory about it now, okay? But I looked at it, I'm like, you know, dude, you you, you bought this at, like, you know, the store. It's you bought got this Parker from, Brothers written on the bottom. Right, or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, it was something like that. You know, it was an old Ouija board, but granted, but still, um, it was a couple older kids that we knew, Tim and John, these old, they, so, you know, I, Steve and my buddies, we were like 13, 14 years old, and these other kids were like 17, you know, something like that. We thought they were, you know, old. <laughs> They could drive, you know, that kind of stuff. So they came over and they were like, yeah, we're going to, you know, let's do it. And I'm like, because I had told them the story. Steve had mentioned like, yeah, Larry's basement's kind of weird and blah, blah, blah. Sometimes weird. It feels weird down there. So they said, let's do this. You know, my parents were gone for the evening. I don't think they were out of town. They were just gone for the evening. Mm -hmm. They were probably both working like four to 12 type shift or something. So we got together down in my basement on the, on the platform down there where we used to practice, you yeah. know, and everything. And we sat there and we lit candles and all this stuff. And <clears throat> Tim and John were kind of leading the whole thing. And they were saying stuff and trying to say, you know, like, if there's anything here, contact us. And we're all laughing and we're like, you know, but we weren't like, we weren't like getting drunk. We weren't getting high. We weren't doing anything like that. We were just hanging out, you know. Yeah. And my buddy John. Uh, who I don't see too much anymore, but I'm still friends with him and everything. I wonder if he remembers this. Um, 
he was sitting there and he was laughing because he was a jovial, funny guy, you know, and he was sitting there laughing, oh, you know, this and that, blah, 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 trying to scare each other. And then all of a sudden, he started being like, he was like, guys, man, I don't, I don't feel so good. And we're like, oh, yeah, okay, you know, sure. You know, you're going to turn into exorcist all of a sudden, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, 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 no. I really, guys, I really don't feel so good. And we're looking at him and he's sweating. And he's sitting there, you know, like cross-legged or whatever. We're all sitting on the floor, you know, we've got like blankets and shit. And he's like sweating. And we're like, dude, what's wrong with you? And he's like, oh, man, bro, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. Finally, at one point, I get I get him up. I'm like, here, man, like, let's come behind my bar. Because, you know, we have the bar down in the basement, my dad's bar. And... I said, come back here. I'll get you like, I'll pour you like some, we'll get some water for you or something. Cause there was a sink back there. And I bring him back there. And almost as soon as I get him back there, he just leans over into the bar sink and just starts fucking puking, man. Like he got sick, like violently sick all of a sudden, like you, like you would if you had like food poisoning or something. Now it's entirely possible he got food poisoning or it's entirely possible that it was all just psychosomatic. But all I know is that he was like totally goofing, jovial. He was fine. And then like literally within a span of like five to ten minutes, he went from being like happy, goofy John to being like, like he looked green, you know, like he just looked like super ill to the point where he had, he was the one of us that drove. He had a car and um, we ended up having to find somebody to drive him home because he was like, I got to get out of here. I can't stay here. I got to go home. I'm sick. I got to get the fuck out of here. And he ended up leaving his car at my house, you know, and had to come back the next day and get his car once he felt better. But after that, I don't think he ever went in my basement again. Hmm. He was just like, I can't, dude, that freaked me out. And I was like, you know, we were all, again, we still didn't believe it. You know, we were still like, okay, you know, whatever. But, but yeah, it's a good point. It was always men. It was always men. And I, I, I never thought about that, really, that the women just have, like, completely. But here's the thing. Other than John getting sick that time when we actually fucked with it, I've never felt, you know, where's wood? I'm going to knock on wood. Um, I've never felt any kind of, I get scared, but never a threat. There's nothing malevolent about it. Yeah, exactly. It's more benevolent, I guess. You know, it's. You know, I've never been hurt. But even Willie, you know, who lives down there now and everything, mm -hmm. even Willie, I don't know if he's had anything lately. He's he's home so infrequently. Right. But he told me back years, several years back, and this is when we were full-grown adults, that he was like, yeah, there's weird things where, like, my TV would turn on by itself, you know. Um, yeah, like appliances would turn on by itself. Or something that he knows he'd he'd have set somewhere and then he'd fall asleep and he woke up and then it was like moved. And he'd be like, I didn't know if maybe you came in and moved it or one of the cats moved it. And, you know, but, you know, or just different times where he thought maybe something had like touched him, you know, or like ruffled him in the night, you know, kind of thing. I'm not okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, the, maybe the ghost likes dudes, man. Maybe yeah. That's always possible. It could be. I'm curious now, since we now film some down there, mm -hmm. if maybe we never catch something on film. Ooh, Everybody's going to have to watch our found shows. footage movie. Mm -hmm. Well, but you know, when we film down there, we've got all these lights the on light. and all that kind of stuff. Usually when you hear about people filming that, I think it, there has to be less light. It has to be like more still. And <clears throat> there's always, when we're down there filming, like, the toyetic segments and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Well, you can always have an orb go through your... Yeah, but orbs can always be so easily explained away as just mm -hmm. a, a light phenomenon. Yeah. It's something to watch for, <clears throat> anyway. But, I mean... Because I watched um, one yeah. guy, he's a, U uh, not YouTube, a Facebook guy, Brandon, and mm -hmm. his grandmother, somebody passed away. And while he was talking about it, an orb... Like went into him. I heard about that video. Yeah, I was hmm. like, oh my god, did everybody else see that? <laughs> it's like everybody's commenting about it. It only happened whenever he started talking about his grandma. Yeah, or his whoever it was, his family. Member. I don't get the orb stuff, man. Yeah, cause yeah, mm. it reminds me of um, 
there was this alien UFO hunter guy who swore by these things called rods. He thought they were like these really mm-hmm. small UFOs. Right. And it turned out it was like these bugs that were whisking by his camera. Right. And he was convinced they were UFOs and he did this whole thing about it. And it turned out it was fucking bugs or dust or something. And well, and that's what I want people to understand. If anybody's listening to this and being like rolling their eyes when I'm talking about all this, I do not by any means subscribe wholeheartedly to the idea of ghosts and spirits and malevolent things i have no idea i don't know i'm not saying it doesn't exist i don't know that it does and even with the stuff that i experienced the statue cat and the red man and the ouija board and all this other shit and there was other incidents and different things but i'm not saying oh i think that it's because there's something spirits in the house or whatever i don't know i have no idea i don't have an answer for it I'm not saying it is. I'm not saying it isn't. There's, But, you know, again, like friends of mine, I posted an old picture from like Christmas or something like not too long ago, maybe last this time last year. I found an old picture uh, that my dad had shot in the living room and it, it got like a pretty full shot of the living room. My mom and I were sitting over towards the one end of the room and you could see sitting over in the corner. It's a blurry, bad, old, shitty, early 70s camera. Mm-hmm. So it's not a good, clear shot. But you see the statue cat sitting there. And my buddy, David, who's a cop now and everything, and he's a dad and all this stuff. Hey, Dave. Um, he saw that picture and he was like, is that the fucking statue cat? <laughs> and he remembered it. Like, I mean, he hasn't been, he hadn't, it had been 30 some odd years. And he was just like, I remember that thing. It's like, there was something up with it. Like he, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't me. He knows he's like, no, I remember that. He's like, there was something up with that thing. You could feel it. You could see he's like, and, and he reminded me of things like there was one time it was, and it wasn't even just me and him. It was me, him and my friend Danny across the alley. And Danny was not a joker. Like, he was a pretty straight shooter kid, you know what I mean? Like, he wasn't a prankster. But da- the three of us were hanging out, in, and this was in the middle of the day. And that cat was sitting over to the side. We were watching the TV, and we were watching, like, music videos and everything. And we were, like, talking. This was, like, around 82, 83. And we were talking, blah, 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 and this and that, and goofing around. And then we looked back at one point, and it all gradually, without one of us saying it, like... It all gradually dawned on us. We were like, hey. And we were like, yeah, yeah. Like, are you going to say what I think you're going to say? And it was like, yeah. Like, that cat was facing the other way earlier, wasn't it? (laughs) Wasn't it facing towards the window? And they were like, yes. They're like, I noticed it too. I just noticed it too. And And now it was facing the other way. Like, it had moved its position. And when we weren't paying attention to it. And we all noticed it at the same fucking time. Now, again, I don't know. We were kids. Maybe we psychosomatically convinced ourselves of this. But it was just weird that we all noticed it at the same time without one of us being like, hey, blah, blah, blah. And the other's going, oh, wait, yeah, I think so. You know what I mean? It was like we all kind of took notice of it. Like we had been subconsciously noticing that cat sitting there as we were watching the TV because it was sitting right next to it up on this platform thing. And then we all noticed that it's almost simultaneously that it wasn't, didn't look like how we remembered it looking a few moments ago. And we ran out of my house (laughs) and, and we sat out on my stairs. We wouldn't go back in the house until my mom came home a short while later. And we were like, and they were like, the cat moved. My mom's like, Oh God. Okay. (laughs) Like, sure. Okay. It did. But I mean, there wasn't even anybody home with us to get up and move it. And we were all, there was never a moment where Danny or David or myself could have got up and like sneakily gone and moved it. You know, because we were sitting with each other over on my big couch all the way across the room, and none of us at any point ever went over there. I don't know, man. I don't know. The vibrations from the TV volume wouldn't have, like, shifted it. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe. I doubt it, because it wasn't like it was a big, booming TV. It was an old-school console TV, you know, with the big knobs and and everything. And, um, yeah, it. so who knows? I, I have no way, or like I said, maybe it was just one of those weird phenomenon things where we all swore, you know, for some reason it caught our attention. Who knows? I don't know. I have no explanation for it. But yeah, it, you know, that's my house is very old. 
my house is over a hundred years old, you know, well over a hundred years old and stuff. It was built like at the beginning of the century or late. Yeah. Some early, early 1900s, probably right around Chicago fire mm. era, you know, and everything's a very old bungalow in the South side of Chicago, one of the oldest neighborhoods in Chicago. So who, who knows? I don't know. I don't know what it is, but yeah, so anyway, I'm get, sorry I've gone on this long story tangent. Hopefully you guys enjoy hearing it and <laughs> laughing at me about it. But for needless to say, when I saw movies like Salem's Lot and stuff like that, or even It, in, in, especially in the new version of It, when they go into that house, that old creepy house and stuff, my house is not creepy like those and by any means, but... Yeah, just things when I see stairs and certain old stairs and doors and how things look and I'm like, oh, yeah, I know that I know that feeling. I know that feeling that you get like, you know, in there and so, yeah. You're listening to the Prescribed Films Podcast Network, home to hundreds of hours of free podcast entertainment. The shows on this network all have a common goal, providing you with the best discussions about movies and other forms of entertainment media. The PFPN hopes to fill your ear holes with audio joy. Visit our website with links to all the other amazing shows at www.thepfpn.com. Thanks for listening. What about you guys? I mean, what what are some other tropes from Stephen King movies that you feel like, yeah, that always fucked with me? I mean, you know, vampires or any kind of monster thing or I don't know, anything. For me, it's when he puts a character that has to get driven around by a skeleton or a zombie. For some reason, I always read that. I'm like, God, that's fucking creepy as fuck, dude. Like, let's say Christine. Right. Or um, in It, where um, Henry Bowers, right. in, in the novel anyway, Patrick gives him the knife and meets him under the sewer. Hockstetter is driving, driving the, around. Well, they did that in the new movie. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, God, that's so fucked up, man. You know? That always gets me in his books, hmm. for sure. That makes sense. Yeah, the idea, because it kind of goes back again to the trapped kind of thing, you know, too. Like, the idea of being, like, trapped in a car, in a moving vehicle with something nefarious and malevolent yeah. like that is that's that's fucked up yeah i have a lot of like car nightmares and stuff too things with like cars driving over like tall bridges and i do too driving yeah. driving off of bridges and stuff mm-hmm. like never that. had that yeah, really driving yeah. off a road into a river i have this one memory of from a child that i can never forget and i don't know if i saw it in a movie or if it was a dream i had as a kid but it's me on a train and for some reason there's a door on the train that has these stairs to this dark basement, and in that basement is like this Godzilla-looking monster that swings his claw and disembowels me. Ooh! And I yeah. don't know where I got that vision from. Wow! Because it's so specific and takes place in areas that cannot physically exist in right. real life. You know. Now, when did you have this dream? When I, 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 as long as I can remember being a kid, I've had this vision in my head. And I don't know if it's from a movie I saw or if it was a dream I had, but it's always been in my head for some reason. That's interesting. <laughs> no, that's interesting because I have, it's a completely different vision, but I have, I have a couple of dreams. Um, oh man, it's so weird to talk about this actually out loud. Um, I had a dream when I was a kid that, um, Oh, it's so hard to explain. I'll just bear with me, everybody. I had this dream when I was a kid that I was in this sort of weird setting, and it almost felt like I was in like Sumerian okay. times. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like like Sumerian god kind of thing and stuff. And there were I just remember it having this kind of weird deserty burnt sun kind of look to everything. And there were things like you would find in like Sumerian text and stuff with like eagle half eat. Well, which this probably goes back to why I don't like weird like minotaur things and half human, half animal type stuff. They fuck with me. 
but there was like you know like you see in old egyptian stuff with the eagle head you know like ra and 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 osiris and and horus and osiris and all them and there were like these things going on and um i was there i can't explain it but i was witnessing it it was like i was there but i wasn't there Mm -hmm. now here's the weird thing about it people could be like okay well you had a dream about that kind of stuff egyptian sumerian kind of weird book of the dead kind of shit i was literally like four like there's no way i would have had any knowledge of any of this now people could say well maybe you saw something on tv or something maybe but i'm skeptical of that or the anunnaki beam that into your brain from space (laughs) (laughs) well and then here's the weird thing so here's the part that stands out that that fucked with me the most so here's so I had this whole dream about witnessing this and the and again you have to put this in the concept of in the context of I was 4 and this is what I was gleaning from it at 4 years old was that I was seeing something to do with the end of the world. It was supposed to be something was going on that this was like the end this is the end of the world like everything was going to end and whatever burn blow up die Pop ceased to exist and it was with these like weird gods egyptian it felt like i had traveled back like fucking three four thousand mm-hmm. years and then all of a sudden there was this dog okay not like a happy like looking dog but sort of like a egyptian dog or almost more like a shepherd like a german shepherd type dog that came up to me and started talking to me okay now i know that sounds funny in and of itself but i don't remember it like talking like it suddenly had a mouth like a human type mouth and was talking like you see in the commercials or movies but it was like communicating with me and the dog was crying Hmm. like a human would cry the dog was crying and it was saying i'm sorry it was like i'm sorry larry i'm sorry that this is happening i'm sorry that this is the way it is and everything and it was upset and it was crying and everything and i woke up (laughs) the fuck Uh (laughs) uh-huh so you guys got some fucked up (laughs) dreams y'all i was four that's the thing about it if i dreamt it now i'd be like okay well whatever that was weird but i was four and it was so (laughs) jarring to me that now you know for the readers the viewers listeners at home i'm 46 now that 42 years later i still remember it like it still stands out in my mind and it was so weird because it was so beyond my four-year-old mind Mm -hmm. to comprehend you know what i mean like it was so just even the concept of the end of the world in egypt and sumerian and these in horus and all these things and this crying animal that was trying that was coming to me in this sort of comforting way but it was like letting me know like this is the way it is and I'm really sorry that this is the end like this is how it's all gonna go I'm sorry you have to see it and experience kind of thing yeah that fucked me up so for people to think I'm weird well it started early <laughs> but yeah I've had I've had weird dreams like that I don't know maybe that's why I'm so sensitive to shit because I am I mean that's that's as much as I like scary stuff or you know even some horror stuff and everything I want to like it but I'm so sensitive to it I can't, you've seen it, You've everybody's witnessed it, I can't like watch something or whatever without getting that too invested in it. I can't, other people seem to be able to separate themselves and they go, well yeah, I wouldn't want to ever see this happen to, in real life or to somebody I know or anything like that, but I can totally enjoy watching this in this movie because it's fucked up and wow. Right? You're like that, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, you're not a violent person or a, a mean person or anything. And you certainly wouldn't want to see that happen to people you care about. But I love watching those Final Destination movies. Right. Man. But <laughs> you, and, and you want, you like watching Cube and all these things yeah. where it's like, well, oh, this dude got fucking disemboweled and caught up like this. And it was fucking amazing. I don't have that in me. I don't have that. Like, I can't, I watch it and I'm just like, oh, like it, it, it bothers me. It feels too, too real. Yeah. You know, and I just, I don't know. I can't, I can't separate the reality. I don't want people to start thinking I'm some sort sociopath. Like, oh, where is your serial killer? No, 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 no. I mean, it's like, I mean, like, I can't, I can't enjoy it the way other people do it. Like, it makes me upset. It makes me depressed. It, it stays in my head, you know? 
What about you, Meg? I mean, what else? I mean, you, you, what other things like stand out for you from like scary movies? The things that really get to you. Um, I guess another thing would be kind of like like things that aren't real, like the werewolves mm-hmm. and and shit like that. Okay, so you're more freaked out by like the traditional kind of like monsters, things like that, like where- something that couldn't possibly be real and it's unnatural. Uh, unnatural. Yeah. That's an excellent way to put it. Okay. You don't like things that are unnatural. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because so at one one time my mom told me she was standing in the kitchen at home, mm-hmm. and she looked out the window and there was a set of eyes looking back at her. She just thought it was somebody there, but then she like saw a figure and it was like huge it wasn't it wasn't human there was no way it could be that big but of almost course it more like a dog. sasquatchy or something yeah more sasquatchy or werewolfy or something not normal yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> so now ever since i when i get home at night especially my yard freaks me the fuck out anywhere in my house i'm fine basement fine upstairs fine anywhere's fine outside not fine oh i understand I run <laughs> get on my car lock my car bolt for the house <laughs> and lock myself inside it and set the alarm well we have to put in context have you ever seen where she lives no okay she lives in the middle of fucking nowhere almost <laughs> not not really not i mean you've got neighbors that are have, somewhat close by yeah i have neighbors i can see their houses from mine they're they're a distance away but that's like the dream place to live for me, man. <laughs> yeah, you'd it's probably nice. dig it. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. But, yeah, it freaks me out. I mean, she lives, yeah, where she lives, because I've dropped you off after gigs and stuff at night and a everything. A little too much to drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you live, yeah, I mean, you have to go down these, like, back windy wood roads and then you you know she lives on it almost could be like a farm you know kind of thing because it is got an old this, farmhouse right it's an old farmhouse basically she's got this house and this little garage and then all this field and stuff behind her across the street is more field and it's, trees and brush and mm-hmm. it's where we were talking about filming sometime mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. for us yep. and everything it's perfect for that <clears throat> but i yeah i mean if that was me fuck yeah that would that would freak me out yeah, it doesn't help either that it's legend that our house was owned by Al Capone. So who knows what else oh, has really? gone down in or near that house. Yeah, supposedly one of his henchmen lived there. And supposedly there's a tunnel going from our house to the, oh, Megan. To, <laughs> to the golf club and stuff. We we're honestly think it's the wrong house because there's a closer farmhouse. I think people just have it confused. Yeah, you're one of those like underground sonar yeah, sensing equipment. Yeah, so we've never found any <laughs> remnants of any possible that don't mean tunnel. That. But yeah, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but that was her, their escape was to go oh. through the tunnel to escape the police. So I don't know how true that is, but that adds to the creepiness That's of the outside. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely need to get over there and like do some filming and stuff like we talked about there's it'd be it'd be interesting, you know. Um now when your mom saw that the eyes on the creature and everything was that at your current house or was that back in Oklahoma? That, no, that was here. Oh, that was here. That was here. Indiana, yeah. Oh, okay. No, in Oklahoma we live way the fuck out in the sticks. You think that's country where we're at now? That ain't nothing. We had 5 acres in Oklahoma. Oh, wow. nice. We just have just a little over an acre here. Hmm. So, yeah, we live way the fuck out in the sticks. Hmm. Dirt road, everything. I don't know how big an acre is, but when I hear acre, I think it's big. <laughs> it's not that big. Okay. <laughs> no, an acre is not that big. Okay. Five acres is a pretty good amount. Five acres is big. <laughs> All right. Yeah. An acre is not big. Acre of land is a pr- fair amount, though. Yeah. I mean, to, you got to understand, Meg, to, some, to people like us that live in the city where we have this little tight spot, little you know, plot, an yeah. acre or two is a fair amount of land, you That's know? That's true. You know, for you, like, growing up the way you did, <laughs> it's not it's not that much, but um, yeah. So, okay, that's, yeah, I mean, that, I mean, like, yeah, things like vampires and werewolves and all that stuff and creatures, they, you know, they freak me out too Mm -hmm. but they're not the kind of things that i think haunt me you know that much Mm -hmm. what about you Vito? go ahead were you gonna say something no i was just gonna say um 
they never really bothered me, bothered me so much until my mom told me that story. And like, there's something at my house that's not natural. So the idea and that so something, the idea could something actually, grabbing yeah. me freaks me the fuck out. Yeah. So that that's what gets me. Yeah, I never had a, a fear of like the werewolf or the vampire stuff. I just thought that stuff was kind of cool. Yeah. But uh, I remember watching Fire in the Sky for the first time which is an alien abduction movie. And there's a scene in that movie where they basically put this guy on the table and there's this powder stuff that comes down and it traps him. And they're doing all this experiment with this needle going into his eye. And Mm. I freaked the fuck out. Yeah. You know, and then we came out in like 94. So I was only like 12 12. ish. Yeah. Yeah. But even then I was like, fuck dude, I hope that never happens to me. Like I love aliens and I would love to meet them, but abduction. Abduction and being experimented. You yeah. <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. No, that's a that is terrifying. That's absolutely terrifying. The idea of being you know, when you think about that, that the idea of becoming the lab rat, you know what I mean? Like being treated like that. I mean it's terrible that we treat Rats like lab rats right. or animals and stuff like that. I hate that stuff. But it's even more <clears throat> excuse me. It's even more terrifying when you think about you being in that position yeah. and being completely helpless. And then getting back to the whole people not fucking believing you. Right. You could see mm-hmm. how that would drive somebody crazy. You know. I know we talked about this in our aliens episode and stuff, but I don't necessarily believe that it's not true. I mean, we I don't know that it is true, but I don't know that it's not true, you know. We don't know. Yeah. So anything else? Should I talk about my final thing that freaks me out the most more than anything? <laughs> yeah, let's wrap it up with that. So my number one thing that bothers me the most about from horror movies and Stephen King stuff that, you know, this isn't most, this isn't really a Stephen King thing, especially, but I've talked about, I think a little bit in other episodes is I don't things that, um, have to do with like possession, like demonic possession and stuff that really fucks with me. I'm not the most like religious person on the planet. You know, I don't really know again, like everything else. I don't know what I believe in, but Yeah, the idea of somebody being possessed like that, being controlled like that by some unknown malevolent force freaks me the fuck out. And then especially when it's something that's not, you know, it's one thing if it's like a, an adult man or or woman or whatever, but when it's like a child. So, you know, when I was really young and I first saw Salem's Lot and I saw the whole again we joke about it again the whole Glick boys thing you know Danny Glick and Ralphie Glick you know being turned into vampires and them being like that and that that look they have that that fucked up possessed look on their face and the way they they act and stuff and there's something really obviously it's unnatural you know all this stuff's unnatural but there's something just really unsettling about that like I don't know if it's something to do with the innocence perverted like that Mm -hmm. And nothing has ever fucked with me ever, ever in my life the way The Exorcist fucked with me. That movie has mind fucked me so bad. And I know there's some people that go, oh, yeah, that that movie, I still think it's the scariest movie. There's other people that go, I don't think that movie's scary at all. There's other people that think that it's funny. I even went through a phase back in my teen years where me and my buddies used to think The Exorcist was funny, you know, that there was things to laugh about it and stuff. And I can still think about some of those things and laugh about them. But there's something about it psychologically and about that way, the way that movie is, the way it's done. And, you know, even maybe more so than than just possession and all that kind of stuff. But one of the things that in all these movies... Uh, Stephen King's stories and stuff that, that fucks with me the most is silence. As silly as that sounds. Like, hmm. there's something about the quietness of some of these scenes in these movies and these parts. Some There's something about the quietness of The Exorcist. I mean, there's just certain scenes that I can think of just right off the top of my head. I mean... You know, you can think of scene like the the brilliance. I mean, everybody remembers The Exorcist for its music. You know that that fucking music, Tubular Bells by Mike mm-hmm. Oldfield. It's 
brilliant piece of music and stuff, but everybody associates it with, but that movie didn't really have music. It didn't, it didn't have scenes. It did have some tension kind of, you know, unnerving strings kind of things and swells and, you know, but it didn't have music. It wasn't like how it is now where you'd have like this, you know, like whatever music happening under these horrible scenes. It was just silence. I mean, there's like scenes where just scenes of, there's a scene after when they're in the middle of the exorcism and they have to take a break. All this horrible shit has already happened to Father Karras and Marin. And they finally, they take a break and they're just sitting on the stairs, the, the inside stairs, you know, going up from the living room up to her bedroom. And, and they're just sitting there. There's no dialogue. There's no music. There's no sound effects. There's nothing going on. Other than you can maybe slightly hear that wheezing breathing of her in the room and the doors closed and everything. And they're just sitting there just tired and defeated. And you just look at these two priests that have just had to face pure evil in this poor girl. And knowing what's behind that door, just watching that scene and knowing what's behind that door waiting for them and just all that silence there. There's something about it that makes my hair stand on it. You know what I mean? I can't do silence. Like it's, you know, Vito, you've, you've bunked, you've bed bunked with me. How many times, uh, you know, over the last how 17 years or whatever it is being in the band with me, we travel a lot and everything. Do I ever go to fucking bed without something? on? Mm-mm. Nope. <laughs> Larry, what's going on? Oh, he can't hear me because he has his headphones in yep. while he's sleeping. <laughs> be like, yeah, be like, hey, dude, hey, dude, I just, you know, yeah, hey, man, it's time to get, and I, I have to have my earbuds or headphones on. I have my laptop like open. I've got it playing some music or an audio book or something. I can't do silence, man. Hmm. I can't, I can't do it. There's something about silence that all of a sudden everything I hear too much, I feel too much, I see that it's, that I don't like silence. So that movie, Exorcist, I know this isn't about King, but we said we cover everything. Yep, um, everything. That movie, its silence and the atmosphere that it sets up is just terrifying. There's nothing more scary to me in the whole fucking world than, the, than Reagan McNeil's fucking face when she's full on possessed. And of course, it's fucking goddamn Halloween time. So every fucking where I turn, there she is. Everywhere I turn on Facebook or anywhere, I just see people who have a fucking picture of her sitting on the bed with her head turned backwards, with that fucking grin and everything. I want to fucking punch it. I fucking hate it so bad. Like there's just something about it psychologically that burned itself into my brain at a very young age. And it's, I don't know, for whatever reason, all my like neuroses and fear has manifested itself somehow wrapped around that character in that movie. I don't get it. I don't know. I mean, I know a lot of people say, oh, but it's known as being one of the scariest movies. It's a mind fuck, especially for its time. Mm -hmm. But as I brought up, I think when we did the last Halloween episode, an interesting side note about it is my mother read that book for the first time because it was a brand new book my mother read it while she was pregnant with me okay and then and everything so it's and like green it's like and my and it's terrified her she thought it was one of the scariest books ever you know like it did it bothered her too not like it did me she's so much tougher than me <laughs> my mom is way more tough than i am that's for sure she she really is well she was a cop for almost 30 years you got One tough cookie there <laughs> yeah she is a tough cookie but um <clears throat> it, yeah it it just you know i saw that movie when i was about eight seven or eight yeah it's a little young it is a little young <laughs> you know i, I think- was watching robocop 2 mark for death but see, you were watching violent things. Yeah. I mean, the thing that was, and I, that's probably why they allowed me to watch it. My dad allowed me to watch it was, well, it wasn't that violent. I also watched an edited version of it. I So like the whole thing with her, with the crucifix and the masturbation, like I didn't see that. I didn't see that till a couple years later when I rented it or whatever. But I saw it when it was like, you know, first time on WGN, you know, kind of thing. We're showing it over two nights. 45 minutes long. (laughs) 
<laughs> no, it was it was they didn't cut that much, but they had to cut some of and obviously they had to cut some of the language. Yeah. They 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 blanked out some of the really bad language stuff, you know, but um I mean the language stuff wasn't even what fucking got to me, you know. It was that I mean I grew up in a house with two cops. I heard all <laughs> the language by that point, folks. I heard all the words you can't say on TV, you know. That was language was nothing to me. But it was like I said, it was that atmosphere and I I was sensitive to statues, obviously, because of the damn statue cat, because of that fucking dream that I had about the Sumerian thing or whatever with the head. <clears throat> and then here you are, that that whole thing and Exorcist with the Pazuzu statue and all that. And there's that one famous scene where she's kneeling on the bed and now all of a sudden that statue lights up like it's behind her somewhere. Suddenly it appears in the room when she's doing that famous pose and Father Marin and Kara see it and everything. Fuck that noise. <laughs> Fuck that. And I've just set myself up. I'm going to have a terrible fucking time sleeping because I know I'm going to dream about this shit because that is the last thing I'll say about this is just to show, like, God, Larry's a fucking mental case. <laughs> I have had an exorcist-related dream, nightmare, at least once a month, at least once a month, every month of my life since I was a teenager. <laughs> every month. Sorry, I'm eating goldfish. Every month I've had, I've had a dream. I can even have like another a dream that seems like it's going perfectly normal and then at some point it turns into it to the point where sometimes I've been in a, a certain state of sleep where I know it's coming and I stop myself like almost like I make myself wake up. It's fucked up. <laughs> it's really fucked up. I can't explain it, but. I mean, is there anything more you guys want to say about this? I think we've talked quite a bit. I think we scared ourselves enough yeah. for one yeah. night. <laughs> I think that it's like, you know, yeah, this was a good conversation, man. It's interesting. Learned some stuff about you guys I didn't know. Same you, to you. Yeah. Well, you guys knew most about my stuff because I talk too much, but they're, you notice they're not going to argue. <laughs> um, I know I do, but no, it, you know, it's cool. I mean, that's the thing that makes these stories so compelling. And that's the thing. All these Salem's Lot, Exorcist, all of them. The thing is, is that they, they fuck with me and I probably shouldn't watch them certain ones because they bother me psychologically and I don't have that means of shutting it off. Maybe it's the way you guys do, although you guys obviously have your certain things that really get to you more than others. But they're all amazing stories. I mean... Salem's Lot, Exorcist, I think they're some of the best fucking made stories, books, book stories ever written. So that's the that's the double-edged sword of it. <laughs> I love them because they're so good. You have a love-hate relationship? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do. I have a love-hate relationship with them because they, they do fuck with me. So, yeah, you know, find, hopefully some of you out there find after this, maybe it'll entice you to pick up that book or watch that certain movie that it's like, you know, I feel like being scared. I feel like freaking myself out. <laughs> you know, it could be any of those things. It could be uh, found footage movies. Those are fucked up. Those are fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I love me some found footage. Yeah, but they, they, they're freaky because... What if that's really real right? that you're it's, watching? It's you got know? such yeah. a reality kind of factor to it. That's, yeah. So whatever uh, whatever floats your, your scary boat... <laughs> You know, check it out and let us know. Let us know in comments and stuff. Like, what do you think about any of this stuff? Any of the shit we talked about? What scares you? You know, have you ever seen a pair of eyes out of a window like that and not been able to explain where the hell that came from? Or, you know, had some weird dream like Vito and I did when we were kids that we can't figure out why you would have that dream because you were way too young to be having that kind of a dream and dreaming about being a little bitty kid and dreaming about being disemboweled by some creature in a basement like fuck is that about yeah, I don't know <laughs> <laughs> exactly so yeah let us know we want to know what you think you know and uh, we hope to hear from you soon we'll be back next month talking about some action hero kind of stuff we're going to talk get our action on mm -hmm. yeah we're going to do it and then we're going to do a real talk where we talk a little bit about um, legends and lore of heroes of action heroes and how did that how do we become infatuated with all that kind of stuff you know where did they 
why do we love the Chuck Norrises and the Bruce Willis's and stuff so much, you know, and all that. So we will be back with that. And with that, we say, I'm going to give you the, the Elvira ending and say, pleasant dreams. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. See ya. I'm waiting. Okay, sorry. I just... Don't fucking do it. Don't. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, you were saying, is it... Um, is it... I <laughs> knew he was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, you set it up so well for me. Come on. <laughs>